If your audit process feels daunting, you find yourself stressed, overwhelmed, you hate that time of the year, then this video is for you. Today, we're gonna to be talking about some QuickBooks Online features that help keep your nonprofit audit ready. Now, this is not, you know, you do these three things and everything will be okay, but this will help in the process so that it makes it, when it comes along, not so stressful. So before I get into the features, let's talk about the two main hiccups that I see as it relates to getting through an audit. Now I am a formal auditor, so being on the other side now, helping nonprofits through the audit really, really, really helps give me a different and unique lens. And so the first place is document retention. Like you have to make sure that you are able to support transactions that have happened throughout the year, whether that's receipts, invoices, bills, right? Contracts, agreements, like you have to have a process around document retention. The other thing I see is a mismanagement of bank accounts, credit card accounts, whether or not they're linked to QuickBooks Online, are you actually reconciling them? And this ends up causing hiccups when the audit process starts. So let's first kind of dive into document retention. First of all, you need a policy. If nothing else, you need a policy, right? Because then that policy has to be communicated to your team, to your employees, whoever, right? So there has to be some sort of documentation that highlights where items are kept, when to keep them, is there a certain threshold to where you maybe don't need documentation, right? What is the uh, the gist of it, right? And everyone who is touching documentation is responsible for spending, right? Needs to be aware of this policy. The second part of that document retention piece is that you have to have a designated space to where these things are actually kept. Now, in the past, you know, typically you're working in an office, so you have file cabinets, right? You have a whole filing system for how you're keeping things. But we also know that things have changed. Many of you are working in a hybrid situation, or you might even be fully remote, which means that you have some sort of, which means you need to have some sort of electronic document management system, whether that's Dropbox, Smart Vault. There is a, a ton of different types of tools that you can be using, but you need to pick one, right? And you need to determine the process around how you use it, how you store things. If there's a certain filing system that you're going to use, who has access, right? Because with these electronic tools, you can set permissions and privacy, right? Determine who has access. And so these are all things that you have to consider. And then once you decide how you're going to use them, then of course you need to document them. Next is the mismanagement of accounts. I can't tell you how many times we've started with clients and they have, let's just say, for example, you know, three bank accounts, maybe two credit cards, but I see two bank accounts linked no credit cards linked. And so as you can imagine, those accounts that are not linked, those transactions are not flowing through the accounting system. Those accounts are not being reconciled. And so you can imagine that means that the financial statements are not correct, right? Because every single thing has to be included. And so when you choose to use accounting software, you're saying that that is your book of record. And so every single financial transaction that is flowing through your organization, it needs to flow through that accounting software. And we need to be looking at that on a consistent basis. We need to be reconciling it monthly, right? To make sure everything is on the up and up so that everything flows through and your financial statements are correct. So we talked a little bit about the problems that I see often, and let's talk about some of the features. Now, before I jump into the features real quick though, the reason why it was important to hit on the problems is because when the audits first start, a lot of the stress and overwhelm that you tend to feel is because things are unorganized, right? Especially around expense testing. And expense testing is where that documentation retention piece is going to really come in handy. So when a sample is being selected and you're being asked to provide receipts and images of checks, right, and things like that and you don't have that or you can't easily access it, it's a red flag for the auditor. And the thing is the audit report is sort of an independent check to say this organization stewards their funds well. This organization has internal controls in place. There's a process to make sure fraud is not happening, to make sure funds are being spent as intended. And so you want to make sure that you are addressing these issues before the audit actually happens so that when the audit does kick off, it does feel a little bit smoother, right? And so my hope is that Going through some of these features, it'll assist, it'll help you, and so let's jump right in. So the first feature is QuickBooks Receipt Capture. I know receipt management, expense management is probably the bane of your existence, but it is important. And I love this feature in QuickBooks because it allows us to attach the receipt 
to the transaction. So there's no question there, right? Also, what I love about being able to use this feature is that when a sample selection is selected, we as the accountants can go in and pull the supporting documentation without having to bug you, the executive director or the operations person about, hey, this is the sample that was selected. Where is this um, supporting documentation? Then you have to pull it, provide it to us, yada, 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 right? We don't wanna have to do that. By using the QuickBooks Online Receipt Capture feature, you are able to create a custom email address where you can actually send receipts, right? That's the first way. You can also upload directly from your computer or you can drag and drop, right? Pretty easy, but that's not all. Now on the other side, when those receipts are sent to QuickBooks, we are actually able to look at all the receipts that have been sent and QuickBooks, you know, using artificial intelligence will then try to match it to a transaction, right? Now, most times I've seen it's pretty correct, but also, right, this is where having the proper support, right? Us as the accountants, we do that next check. We make sure that the proper receipt is matched to the actual transaction, right? And that it's correct. Then that's stored there. You don't have to do nothing else, right? And so what that does is that helps also to retain that information in one place. So it's not like you have documentation over here, you have the transactions over there. It all actually ends up living in one place. And the, 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 the really exciting thing about this is that it's not just receipts. You can send bills, you can send invoices. And so it is, uh, more robust, right, than just receipt capture. And because a big part of testing when the audit field work kicks off is having supporting documentation, being able to just have it already there linked to the transaction is key. So the next feature is the ability to link your bank account. And the reason why this is key is because we do not want to have to book every individual transaction that has moved manually, right? And we know that a lot of error tends to be human error. And so any way we can kind of supplement that, uh, that works, right? And so one, you can link your bank accounts, which means that the transactions that are happening in your bank account get automatically downloaded to the system. Now, of course you have to have checks and balances, but it's much easier to check and make sure things is correct versus having to import and, you know, do that manually, then do the check and make sure everything is in there and so this kind of skips one step so being able to link your bank and credit card accounts that means everything is already there the transactions are being downloaded automatically you then just have to log in and review but if you have an accountant right you have a team that you're being supported by they can do this piece for you but we go in we review the transactions we make sure that they're booked correctly we can add them from that bank feed right and it's all done right there in the system. We can determine what expense or revenue account it belongs to. We can tag the appropriate functional expense, the correct donor. We can do all of that right there, right? And so that helps to make things more efficient and to eliminate human error. And a part of that also is being able to then attach the bank statement after you reconcile so that if you're going in and you're reviewing, you want to review the bank reconciliation, but it's like, okay, I want to look at this in comparison to the bank statement. You don't have to leave the system to go and find the bank statement, open it up in another window. It can all be done right there. And so one of the themes you probably see is that I love the fact that QuickBooks Online is robust enough that a lot of the things that we need to do to keep your financial operations intact can be done right there in the system. And so it helps to eliminate a lot of these inefficiencies of manual workarounds and keeping things outside of the tool and the software and having to jump from place to place because a lot of times that deters you from wanting to do it, right? And we know that this is a non-negotiable part of running your organization. And the last feature I'm going to talk about, remember, this is not an exhaustive list. I'm just touching on three things. The last one I'm gonna to touch on is the audit log. This tells us who did what and when. Now, the thing with having, you know, a cloud-based accounting software, you can determine who has access, you can determine their permissions, but we know things happen, right? And so the ability to be able to go in and run an audit log to see when things have happened, when things have been changed is key because sometimes the auditors have questions and you know what, sometimes you don't have the answers, right? You may not remember what happened months ago. And so the audit log is a really great tool to be able to go back and look at things that have happened. Sometimes it might jog your memory, you might then remember why you made a certain adjustment and things like that. And so it is something that I say, don't forget is there because it can be used to your benefit. And an honorary mention is the ability to attach and link supporting evidence outside of receipts 
to transactions as well. So maybe you have a vendor that you've entered into an agreement with. Do you wanna attach that agreement to the transaction? You can do that, right? And so again, this is another way for us to stay in the system, not have to move on to other tools and software. And I mean, you can, but it's nice to have the option and the feature to be able to have things living inside of the accounting tool so that you kind of stay audit ready, right? And in this way, you don't have to get ready. So I hope these three features were helpful. And if it was like, uh, what's the cliff notes? Here are the three features that we went over that you may want to look into. One, it's the QuickBooks receipt capture feature. Two, it's the ability to link your accounts, so your bank accounts and your credit card accounts, as well as the ability to attach your bank statements to your bank recs. The third feature was the audit log. And then an honorary mention was just the ability to attach supporting documentation to individual transactions. Now, as a nonprofit organization, especially one that wants to grow, it is very hard to kind of circumvent being audited, right? Unless you just are choosing to stay small. But even then, some grantors or, or funders will require an audit in order to fund you. And so sometimes it really is inevitable, right? And so if you want this process to be painless, stress-free, seamless, then you need to think about ways that you can improve your accounting process, ways that you can implement efficiencies that help these things be less overwhelming. And so I hope that this was helpful. And in the next video, I'm going to be talking about the benefits of a nonprofit audit. So you'll want to stay tuned for that.